Okay, folks, gotta go pay the bill at the parts store. Hey, folks, this is Mike from KEI Fabrication. This is my LS swapped Mazda B2200. Design chair, I can do some highly classified scientific calculations. thought that was going to be the easy part of this job. Alright folks, so what I'm attempting to do is rebuild this. When this back section of the truck was weak and this rear tailgate started uh, deteriorating and bending and deflecting, it crushed the back side of this. This corner post was tearing away and it had all kinds of patch jobs to get through. So what I'm going to do is, uh, because I've strengthened this up, um, I don't really need to rely on the strength of this corner so much anymore, but it is important to tie this all back in properly. So I'm in the process of reproducing this. You can see where the marker light used to go. It's split right through. So I'm in the process. I just traced out a square of material. I'm going to transfer some bend lines, and then I'm going to go over to the press brake and put this thing back together. And then what I'll do is make this a butt weld. I'll weld it in really good, and then I'll smooth this all so it looks like um, it was never repaired. So let's see if I can pull that off.
All right, so we've got the uh, corner here all reconstructed. What I did here was I put a piece of this angle iron so it goes this way against the back side of this tube or the orientation of the truck is the front side of the tube and then this way towards the front of the truck. So this corner is all reconstructed and then to stop the material inside the bed from pushing out here, uh, this angle iron is going to get stitched in all the way up. So that's the next move. Hide all the women and children. So we got the corner all reconstructed, the angle iron reinforcements are all in position and fully welded. So um, one of the annoying things I'm going to have to do just because I can't stand it looking like this is I'm going to put some strapping in there and stitch it in just to cover up the holes. Um, unfortunately there's ten of those that have to be done. and. This side is reconstructed as well. There was, this one didn't need as much surgery. So that's um, reinforced with angle iron. It's stitched all back into the vertical post. And we're working our way down this, this side with the angle iron. So, all right, I've had enough for today. We'll pick it up again tomorrow. Oh yeah, and I got the panels cut out for the remaining two openings. So we'll be able to stitch those in real shortly as well. Alright folks, I lost a little bit of time today because I had to run some errands. So I came back to the shop tonight. And these are the pockets where the old rack body used to fit in. The stake body pockets. I went ahead and did a short production run of these. Uh, I needed 12 of them and I'm going to stitch them in here and um, I got it held up with a magnet here. So I'm going to stitch these in so it fills in this gap and um, just makes it nice. So it's a little bit of overkill but um, I just can't stand sending it down the road with, uh, with these holes here. The other thing I did tonight, take advantage of uh, a little bit of cooler temperatures, was I managed to uh, trim all of the hardware off of the tailgate. The closing mechanism, the hinges, the latch. Uh, got that done and also these are vertical supports out of all the stuff that was uh, bent up and twisted these vertical supports ended up being fairly straight so I may use those as uprights uh, when I make the new tailgate the old tailgates um, were you know barn doors and uh, they got all twisted and bent so I'm trying to make stuff out of box tubing that the perimeter of it is very strong and these will merely be to prevent the expanded metal mesh from bending too far. So there'll be two of those vertical supports in each tailgate. So the other thing I've been working on is I think I have just about every pair of vice grips I own up top there. That headboard was crushed probably four inches so what I have up there is a piece of one by one by 120 wall box tubing to stiffen that up and um, I'm gonna start from the ends and work my way towards the middle I got a little bit of tension on it to keep it perfectly horizontal with my overhead crane and as I start stitch welding it in from the ends um, I can make sure put a level on it and make sure that the 
cross member is staying straight and pulling the headboard back into shape so it'll maintain it. So again, a little bit of extra work just to make it a nice job all the way around. Trying to fix all of the issues with this truck body before it leaves the shop. The other thing is, is the original cover, cargo cover, is on this roll. And that tubing has also got a big bend in it here. And the original targo, excuse me, the original cargo cover that was wrapped up on that, there was actually a small fire in the back of the truck and it melted the cargo cover so it was adhered to itself. So I trimmed that off, got rid of that, exposed the bar so I could see where that bend is, and I will address that also before the truck leaves. So a little bit of progress tonight and uh, tomorrow morning while it's still cool I'll get up here and start burning some wire. Alright so I filled in all of the holes from the stake pockets. There's six of them on each side. There was one right here. Another one right here. Another one right here and another one here and this one right here is going to get covered up with this angle iron once I put the uh, panel in place that goes here, but that was the last one. Both sides are done, both sides are finished ground. Again, my OCD was uh, telling me that there's no way I could live without covering up those holes because every time I saw this truck, I'd always say, man, I wish I had covered those up. So anyway, hopefully the customer's happy. Um, this really is not only a re-engineering and fabrication, but also somewhat of a restoration job as well, so. Alright, next I'm just going to move the truck ahead about four feet. It's raining out today, it's supposed to rain out again tomorrow, so I can only go out as far as the cab. Now, the reason why I need to do that is I've got some work to do on the bulkhead up top and those filler panels I need my welding leads to go in there and I need to get my welder in this spot right here and in order to get it around that post I gotta pull the truck past here so here we go So we got the welder over there and uh, I got the leads running through the opening up there and we're going to continue to do some work on the bulkhead and actually get the far side panel that's missing, same panel that's missing on this side, it's missing on the other side, I'll get that stitched in as well. Alright, so what I have here is the panel that is going to go up in that corner. And the customer has asked me to put a D-ring in that corner. So when they have a full load in here, we can open up these doors. And reach through and be able to hook that ring on. And while we're on the side of the truck, be able to hook up whatever product uh, that's further down the track there. Um, so anyway, uh, I've got it roughed in, I've got this cut out, I'm going to use it as a template to trace out on the other panel, which is laying right there, and that one is for that side. So, uh, you know, lay it all out, figure it out, and then copy it and repeat. So, I'm going to trace it out on that one, and then I'm going to go stitch this up in place up there, and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so this is the component that the customer specified as part of the customization of this thing. And you can see we have a D-ring here. And the object is to have this access panel. So if you've got something big like a car in the back of this thing, open this door, reach in from the side, hook the chain to the D-ring and either to the wheel or the chassis of the vehicle, cinch it down 
with an axle strap or whatever it is, close it back up. So uh, the only final thing that I may do is if this gets bowed in and out at all because of some material pushing outward on this and, and bowing it out, the door is not going to work right. So what I may do is take a piece of angle iron and just put it, put it so it picks up the vertical cross member here and picks up the vertical cross member here. Stuff coming down, it'll glance off and go away. And if something impacts it pretty hard, it'll resist the uh, deflection here. So that'll be like the last thing for this side. Uh, so now I'm gonna fabricate the one that's gonna go in the opening that the camera is looking through right now. And uh, pretty much everything but the tailgate will be completed at that point. I might have overheated it. All the smoke up here is all from that grinder. So uh, I pushed it to the limits. I can't even hold on to it without gloves. And I think you can see it smoldering. Yep, she's cooked. Down to one now. Well, there's the last panel. And the door is functional. There it is. What I'll do is I'll make something to hold it up while we're working in here. You can't see it, but the T ring is right here. I could access the vehicle. So I just gotta figure out something to hold this up when necessary. There you have it. So what I've done is I've uh, spent a good hour grinding all the old welds off and the old metal off of all the components for the tailgate hinge and latch assembly. So now when I'm ready to tack this together, they're ready to fully weld. So now there's nothing stopping me. I can't procrastinate any longer. I have to get around to fabricating the tailgate. All right, so I've got one half of the gate roughed in. I use the truck as a fixture in every C-clamp I own, I think, and I decided to miter the corners and tack them in place. It's probably more work than it's worth, but I don't have to build caps for the ends or anything like that. All right, we got the other half of the gate in. We used the first gate as a fixture. See, I got clamps holding it true to the body. Double checking it with a square all along the way. And uh, I got the hinges tacked in place on both sides. So um, I'm going to firm things up with some vertical supports in between. And I'll undo the middle and then I'll put the uh, latch mechanism in place. So that's the plan for tomorrow. All right, so I've got the verticals tacked in position, equally spaced. So now I'm going to final weld the corners because those are going to get covered up by the latch mechanism so we'll do that and we'll rough in the latch mechanism next all right so I've got the door hinge locking mechanism roughed in and I got the little lock for the actual handle itself tacked in place got some fine tuning to do but other than that it works out well. I did test the hinges and the door swings all the way around to the side. So, um, so far, things are looking pretty good. 
All right, I've got the rear tailgates completed, and here's the passenger side. The latch is good. I'm in the process of just cleaning up because all of the heavy fabrication is done. I've got all of my C clamps ready to go back on the welding bench. Collected all of my vice grips. Just trying to get rid of the clutter right now. Got a couple of small things to finish up and then this thing is pretty much ready for paint. So I'll show you how the rear doors work here in a little while. So I just uh, capped off the end of this horizontal tube and I welded up the front side of this vertical. That was the last thing I needed to weld because when the truck was turned around in the shop, my welding leads wouldn't reach over there. And it's so tight in here with this truck in here, this is the only way I could do it. Now it's just clean up work and getting this thing ready for paint. <laughs> 